Hey, 42 here. There are many similarities between ourselves and our chimpanzee cousins. Not only is our DNA almost 99% identical, we also share the same arrangement of bones, muscles, nerves, and internal organs. We even have the same brain structure, meaning that, much like us, they're capable of experiencing a whole range of complex thoughts and emotions, which enable them to partake in an array of recognizable social interactions. They play together, kiss one another, laugh at each other, and even hold hands. You can think of chimpanzees as our peace-loving hippie cousins, a version of humanity as it might have been in a more innocent time, before we managed to get ourselves all corrupted by money, power, drugs, and intravenous Netflix. You could think of chimpanzees that way, but you probably shouldn't, because it turns out those hairy buggers share plenty of our darker traits too. Don't believe me? Well, let me take you back to January 1974, when, for the first time in documented history, a species other than our own declared war. The Gombe National Park is 13 and a half square miles of rainforest, enveloped within steep valleys, grasslands, and vegetation, providing the perfect habitat for a wealth of animal species. The reserve is only accessible by boat, leaving its flora and fauna free to thrive, away from any modern world interference making it ideal for observing chimpanzees in their natural environment. We know about the war that took place there in the 70s, thanks to legendary chimpanzee expert Jane Goodall. She arrived at Gombe in 1960 at the head of a team of scientists planning to study the reserve's chimpanzees, and she brought with her a completely unique approach to chimpanzee research. Instead of attempting to study her subjects Star Trek style, at a distance and with the minimum disturbance possible, Goodall took almost exactly the opposite approach. She set up a feeding station designed to help the chimps familiarize themselves with their human observers, then got up as close and personal as her furry friends would allow. It was a controversial way of doing things but it gave the team a completely new perspective on the animals they were studying. And what they found was remarkable. Each chimp had its own unique personality. That might not sound all that surprising, but at the time, it was groundbreaking. It was clear to Goodall that these weren't simply animals, they were individuals. Accordingly, she gave each of the chimps a name eschewing the standard numbering system usually used during scientific studies. By becoming a part of the chimps' environment and not simply observers of it, Goodall and her team were able to make some startling discoveries. The first of which is that chimpanzees are not, as had long been thought, vegetarian. In fact, they're capable hunters, and the research team observed them stalking wild pigs and taking down smaller colobus monkeys, as well as feasting on a wide variety of insects. If the revelation that chimps were partial to a nice rare steak was surprising, what Goodall discovered next quite literally shook our understanding of what it meant to be human. In the jungles of the Gombe National Park, Jane Goodall witnessed a chimpanzee stripping the leaves from a twig and using it to prize termites from a mound. Again, knowing what we know today, that probably doesn't sound all that impressive, but at the time it was genuinely earth-shattering. For the first time in the history of science, we had seen a creature, other than a human being, fashioning and using a tool. It's hard to imagine just how exciting that must have been. It was just that nobody had ever seen anything like it before. At the time, tool making was considered one of the things that truly set us apart from the rest of the animal kingdom, an integral part of what it meant to be human. When Goodall reported her findings to Louis Leakey, her mentor and an expert in the field of human origins, 
His reply showed exactly how monumental the discovery was. Now we must redefine man, redefine tools, or accept chimpanzees as humans. Accepting chimpanzees as humans might be a bit of a stretch, but Leakey's statement illustrates the huge impact Goodall's discovery had on our understanding of animal intelligence. And the revelations didn't stop there. Because the dense jungles of the Gombe National Park would soon bear witness to one of the most astounding events observed in the animal kingdom. On the 7th of January 1974, a full-scale war broke out. Like many human wars, the Gombe Chimpanzee War was a fight for succession. It started when Leakey, leader of the Casakella, a local group of chimps, passed away, opening up a power vacuum. Oh, and in case you're wondering, the Leakey in question here wasn't the previously mentioned paleoanthropologist Louis Leakey, but a chimpanzee that had been named after him. Leakey had been a strong and popular alpha male, and had retained his position of power for many years. During this time, he'd overseen a long period of harmony within the Casakella community. After his death, the most obvious replacement was an intimidating male, who went by the not-so-intimidating name of Humphrey. But Humphrey's leadership skills weren't anywhere near the standard set by his predecessor, and almost immediately he struggled to establish his authority over the other chimpanzees. To be fair to Humphrey, being a chimpanzee alpha male is a tough gig. The alpha is responsible for the well-being of the whole community, which can include anywhere between 20 and 150 chimpanzees. It's a job that can't be done alone, and so a complex hierarchy of lieutenants are drafted in to ease the burden. Unfortunately, Humphrey didn't have the same support network that Leakey had established, and so straight away there was disharmony within the group. Humphrey's aggressive attitude was making him increasingly unpopular with the rest of his troop, and some of the other chimps seemed to be losing faith in his leadership. The second and third ranking males, brothers Charlie and Hugh, decided they'd had enough and fancied their chances at running things their own way. The brothers were a formidable force and an obvious threat to Humphrey's leadership. Tensions continue to rise, with standoffs and aggressive displays happening more and more frequently. Individually, the brothers were no match for Humphrey, but in a tag team match, they had a clear edge. But just when it seemed a royal rumble in the jungle was inevitable, the chimps appeared to solve things at the negotiating table. With Charlie and Hugh unwilling to accept Humphrey's rule, the troop split into two with the brothers founding a new troop that was dubbed the Kahama Community. It isn't unusual for chimp communities to split up like this, but usually proceedings are fairly amicable. Not so in this case, because it soon became clear that Humphrey had no intention of forgiving his would-be usurpers, and like a power-mad dictator, he began to plan for war. Summoning five of his strongest adult males, Humphrey led a raiding party into the territory now occupied by the Kahama chimps. When they came across Godi, one of the Casakella males, foraging for food on his own, they ambushed him. Godi was brutally attacked by the raiding party, beaten and torn with hands, teeth, and even rocks. When Godi had finally stopped twitching, the Casakella chimps were witnessed celebrating the kill, whooping loudly and shaking nearby trees. The Gombe Chimpanzee War had claimed its first victim. As far as wars go, this one was particularly one-sided. Humphrey's Casakella chimps were the aggressors throughout, launching intermittent raids on the Kahama chimps' territory over the course of four years. Whenever they came across an isolated enemy, they attacked. Goodall's accounts from this period are genuinely disturbing. She talks of chimps drinking the blood of their fallen enemies, of cannibalism, 
and of one-time friends brutally attacking and murdering one another. Neither of these troops were all that large to begin with, and as the Kahama chimps' numbers began to fall, it wasn't long before only one male remained. A chimp by the name of Sniff. We can only assume Goodall would have chosen more dangerous sounding names if she'd known her peaceful chimps would eventually go full on Rambo on her. Anyway, Sniff managed to stick it out for a year before he too was tracked down and eliminated by Humphrey and his lieutenants. With all the males neutralized, the females of the Kahama troop were largely defenseless. One was killed by the Kasakela males, two simply disappeared, and three were kidnapped and taken back to Kasakela territory. After four brutal years, the Gombe Chimpanzee War was over. When Goodall reported her findings, many were skeptical of her accounts, believing she was projecting human characteristics onto the behaviour of chimpanzees. After all, animals of almost every species are known to fight one another from time to time, usually over territory, the opportunity to reproduce, or access to food and other resources. Even we humans are partial to a spot of fisticuffs, usually because someone got a little too drunk. But the Gombe Chimpanzee War was different. These weren't isolated flashpoints that sparked when two troops happened to cross one another's path accidentally. The actions of Humphrey and his chimps were clearly premeditated. Over the course of four years, they systematically eliminated the males of a neighbouring troop in the most brutal way imaginable. Some scientists claimed Goodall's controversial research methods were behind the war, that somehow by inserting herself into the mists of the chimps, she'd upset some unseen balance. But subsequent, less intrusive studies would eventually confirm what Goodall had always believed, that chimpanzees, left alone in their natural habitat, are capable of premeditated violence and even warlike conflict. Because humans and chimpanzees evolved from the same species around 6 million years ago, some anthropologists have suggested the events of the Gombe offer us a glimpse into the behaviours of our own primitive ancestors. Some even go far as to suggest that such violent tendencies amongst chimpanzees have worrying implications for our own species. Namely, that we are just innately predisposed to war, just as chimpanzees seem to be. Whilst anyone who watches the news probably won't find such a concept all that difficult to believe, that doesn't mean it's true. And another ape species that is equally closely related to humans, the bonobo, seems to display almost no instinct for war whatsoever. In fact, they really are our hippie cousins. They frequently have sex with one another as a way of saying hello. As you can probably imagine, Jane Goodall was deeply affected by the events of the Gombe Chimpanzee War, and she struggled to shake the memories of some of the more horrific things she'd witnessed for many years after the event. But the study did little to diminish her fondness for the chimpanzees, and she would continue to study them for much of her life. Her groundbreaking research would forever alter our understanding of chimpanzee societies, and in particular how much they mirror our own. The Gombe chimps are still studied to this day thanks to the Gombe Stream Research Centre, which continues the work Goodall began almost 60 years ago. It is the longest running field study of an animal species ever conducted. The Gombe Chimpanzee War remains the only event of its kind documented at the Gombe National Park, but the Kasakela continue to thrive there living peacefully alongside other chimpanzee communities. Thankfully, any evidence of them planning a Planet of the Apes-style global takeover is yet to be observed. Today, territorial violence and hostile infighting are the least of a chimpanzee's worries. Poaching, deforestation and human transmitted diseases have all contributed to a vast decline in wild chimpanzee populations. Jane Goodall continues to work tirelessly, raising awareness of the plight of chimpanzees and other endangered species. 
ensuring that animals such as the ones in Gombe National Park can continue to thrive in a world without fear of intrusion from the modern world. Thanks for watching. Check out my new podcast, Random Interesting Facts, available on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and anywhere else you get your podcasts. Link in the description below. Thanks.